Hello, this is Wilock number 39. Reviewing once more, let's go over product rule. For product rule, we can see that x to the fifth, y to the sixth times x to the one, y to the cube. All we have to do is find out our common bases. In this case, our common bases are x and y. Now, if we rearrange this, we get x5 times x1 times y6 times y cubed. y6 plus 3, since they're the same bases, times x5 plus 1, since they are the same bases. And as a result, we get 6x x x to the 6th power times y to the 6th power. Moving on, you have quotient rule. x cubed, y to the 7th. x squared, y to the 4th. Since these have the same bases, we can basically write this as x cubed divided by x squared times y seventh divided by y fourth. x cubed divided by x squared is just x. y seventh divided by y fourth is y cubed. And that will be your final answer. Now, zero exponent rule is really simple. Even though there's such a complicated thing inside the parentheses, because it's to the zeroth power, it's just one. Expand the following functions, 5c cubed, which is 5 cubed, c cubed. 5 cubed is 125. c cubed would just be c cubed. Solving the negative exponents. Since a negative exponent only refers to this, because um, when you have a negative exponent, you have to find its reciprocal. But in this case, you would have 3 times 1 over y over 4. Since this y is the only one that is to the power of negative 4, 3 is not. So our answer would actually just be y to the 4th. Moving on, solve radical equations once more. 2 square root x minus 8 is equal to 0. Add 8 on both sides and you get 2 square root of x. We divide by 2 on both sides and we get squared root of x is equal to 4. If we square both sides, we get x is equal to 16. And that would be our final answer. Moving on. Now let's solve multi-step inequalities. In this case, you just you can solve this like a regular um, function, but it's not going to be one value. It's going to be multiple values. So what do I mean by this? Let's just try it out. 3x minus 7 is less than 8. Add 7 on both sides. You get 15, 3x. If we divide 3 on both sides, we get x is less than 5. Now, what does this mean? That means that on the number line, at the point 5, any number that is less than 5 is going to be the solution to this um, inequality. So if I were to put 0, since it's less than 5, this will work. 3 times 0 minus 7 is less than 8. 0 minus 7 less than 8. Negative 7 is less than 8, so that's correct. Moving on, 6x minus 7 is greater than 2x plus 17. Now we're trying to find out which range, which which of the domains, sorry, of x will make this true. So how do we do that? We subtract 2x on both sides. We add 7 on both sides. We get 4x here is greater than 24. Now if we divide 4 on both sides, we get x is greater than 6. What does this mean? If on the six, on the number line at point six, all the greaters, greater, all the numbers greater than six will be equal, will be the solution to this inequality. So let's check it out. What about seven? Six times seven minus seven is greater than two times seven plus seventeen. Seven times six is forty-two. Minus seven is greater than fourteen plus seventeen. 14 plus 17, well, that's just 31. 42 minus 7 is just 35. Yeah, 35. Now, is 35 greater than 31? Yes, so that is true. What if it was uh, less than 6? Let's try it. What if it was 0? If we input it into the value, into the inequality, we get 6 times 0 minus 7 is greater than 
2 times 0 plus 17. That would just give us negative 7 is greater than 17. Is negative 7 greater than 17? No. So we know that these values from uh, 6 being equal to 6 to all the way to less than 6 would be incorrect. It will not be a solution to the inequality. However, any value that is greater than 6 will be a solution to the inequality. That's it for Wylock number uh, Wylock number thirty nine.